Hello. Hello and welcome to another video of outdoor activities for kids. We are going to be making a shadow stick. Today is a perfect day for it. We've got bright sunshine and we're on a football pitch in our local park or your school playing field or something like that would be equally perfect. Yeah, you could do this on a schoolyard, um, a beach would work, um, or a close cropped lawn. You need an open space where you can clearly see the shadows cast on the ground. This activity is about natural navigation. Yeah, it's a survival technique which you could use out in the wilderness. So there's very much an opportunity here to paint a survival scenario for the kids to get them excited. But it's a great activity because it's all about learning about the relationship between the earth and the sun and the way that the sun tracks across the sky each day. This activity is great to use with groups of kids but also for kids individually as well because you just don't need a lot of equipment. A few sticks, maybe some pebbles to replace the sticks even and you're good to go. Super simple. So today we are using one big stick with a point in it it's just over a meter long. We've got a handy mallet or a heavy stick which we use instead of a hammer to hammer that into the ground and then you're going to need some smaller sticks with little points in and that will uh, track the line across the grass but if you haven't got this or you're on a schoolyard some pebbles could also be used so you don't need much kit at all. I'm now going to leave you with James to explain exactly how to do it. So what is a shadow stick? Well, it's a way of finding your direction if you are lost out in the wilderness. So let's paint that picture now. You're in the middle of nowhere, you don't have any tools with you, you don't have a compass, you don't have the compass app on your phone. Let's say your phone's died with the battery. All we have is the sun to use. It's a bright sunny day. Well, as long as you know roughly what time it is and that we can see the sun, we can have a good idea of what the directions are north, south, east and west. And that shadow stick is going to help us to see that much more accurately. First, we're going to hit our large stick into the ground so it's nice and secure. And we want to make sure it's away from anything else that's going to cast a shadow in the area around it. Once it's knocked into the ground, you'll see a clear shadow on the earth. And what you want to do first is put one of these short sticks right at the tip of the shadow of this stick here. That's really important. In fact, one thing you can do is get a friend or schoolmate to uh, tap the top of the stick with, your, with their hand while the other person puts the stick in the ground because it helps them see that tip of that shadow much more easily. Once we've got our first marker stick in the ground at the tip of that shadow, all we need to do is wait. And then every 15 or 20 minutes, come back and put another stick down in the ground to mark the point where the shadow is now falling. Now this activity is best done over a whole day. So maybe over a school day or a weekend day, something like that. And it's best started in the morning. So nine, 10 o'clock is good. And then doing it right through the day, maybe till three. And every kind of 20 minutes or maybe every half an hour, you can get someone to go out and mark the ground there where the shadow is now falling. But you could just do it over an hour. The difference being, if you do it over a whole day, you'll get a much longer line and the kids will see a much longer track of the path of the sun. But you can do it just over an hour, say every 10 minutes within that hour, and that will work fine. You'll get enough sticks in a line to be able to work out our four directions. So while we're waiting for the shadow to move so we can put our second marker in, Let's talk a little bit about what we might know about north, south, east and west already. And what we're talking about is the northern hemisphere. So we're talking about Europe, everything above the equator. OK, the sun rises in the east. That's what we're taught. The sun sets in the west. The picture is actually a little bit more complicated than that. But let's say, just for simplicity's sake, the sun rises in the east and it sets in the west. As it makes its arc over the sky, 
What happens at midday, at 12 o'clock generally, the sun is in the south. It's in its highest position and it's in the south. So it goes from east, midday south to west. Now, if you tried this at different times of the year from the same spot, you would see how the line that the shadows make changes throughout the year. And this is all to do with the position of the Earth relative to the Sun, the tilt of the Earth. It's all to do with astronomics. But to make it simple, you might have heard of the summer solstice and the winter solstice. The summer solstice around the 21st of June is the longest day of the year, the day when we have the most daylight. The winter solstice, six months later, is on around the 21st of December, just before Christmas, the shortest day of the year when we have the least amount of daylight, okay? In between those two points, the halfway markers between the two solstices are the equinoxes. Spring equinox around March the 20th and autumn equinox around September the 20th, 21st. Those are the four points in the year which really mark out the path of the sun. So what are the equinoxes? It's the equal point between the shortest day of the year and the longest day of the year. So you have equal length of day and night. It's all about being equal. Okay, it's been about 10 minutes and we're ready to put in our second marker. You can already see that the shadow has moved away. It was here and now it's moved several inches over towards me. So there we go, second mark in the ground. And then we'll come back in another 10 minutes or so and put our third marker in and so on. So it's been a couple of hours now and I've been back every 15 or 20 minutes to put another marker stick in the ground. But what has all this effort been for? Well, let me explain. We are now gonna use the line that we've created with our sticks to find out our four compass points, north, south, east and west. Now, you could simply look along the line of the sticks that you've created or you could get a straight stick if you've got one hanging around and lay it down along that line to help you see it a little bit better. Now what you'll get is an east-west line. So the line of sticks that you create on the ground will fairly accurately be marking out east on one end and west at the other. Where your stick started, that will be in the west and where your last stick was put, that will be over in the east. So if we know where east and west now are, we can also easily work out where north and south are because they're 90 degrees to the line that you've got. And in fact, you could always use the other stick to make a giant cross on the floor now to point out those four points of the compass. Now you could take my word for it that I'm telling you the truth, but the best way to test it is either to use a compass that you may have or to use the compass app on your phone. It's free to download if you haven't got it but test it out with a compass and see if it's giving you an east-west line. Have a look what's going on here. We've got our line made by the shadow sticks, marked by this stick here, and then we have the east-west line on the compass, which is more of a diagonal there. They're not lining up parallel. The reason for this is because of the time of year we're doing this experiment at. We're less than a month away from the summer solstice, and at the summer solstice and winter solstice, the sun rises and sets at the furthest extremes of true east and west, so it's a little bit off. If you did this at the autumn equinox or the spring equinox, these lines would be fairly parallel. So let's wrap it up by painting the picture of our survival scenario. We're lost in the wilderness, we've stopped, we've slowed down, we've taken stock, we had a couple of hours to maybe have a bit of water, get our thoughts back together, and we've been marking out the shadow of the sun for those couple of hours. And now we have our east, west, north, south directions, and we get a good idea about which way we wanna to go to get ourselves out of the wilderness. Try it for yourself, it's a lot of fun. Well, I hope you get plenty of opportunity with sunny days to practice this activity with your group of kids. Yeah, and it's a good one to try at different times of the year. Perhaps make a permanent mark of the lines that the kids have made at one time of the year and then try it again a few months later and see how the line changes in the same spot. Because there's a real good learning opportunity there for the kids to understand how actually the place where the sun rises and sets in the sky does change throughout the year. 
So thanks very much for watching and hope to see you again in our next video. Bye for now. Bye bye.